You're all very welcome here this morning for the f finals, the Alliance Skiena Skull finals. And we begin this first final between Canavy and Coachford. Now we'll introduce you to both teams. First, Canavy. Noel Brown, <laughs> Owen Cullen, <laughs> Daniel O'Reardon, <laughs> Sean Brown, <laughs> Jack O'Connor, <laughs> Dennis Murphy, <laughs> Owen Moynihan, <laughs> Billy Kingston. John McMahon, Patrick O'Neill, Jack Kelleher, David Tupper, Johnny Byrne, Eric Moynihan, John Brown, Ben Chiesty, Shang Lucy, Connor O'Neill, Adam O'Callaghan, Daniel Brown, James Downey, Olin Byrne. A big cheer for Canavy. The coach for team, Dylan Martin, Mark Deneen. Tygo Brian Bradley, yeah. Daniel O'Driscoll, yeah. Billy Dennehy, yeah. Shane Tarrant, yeah. David Thompson, yeah. Paul Dilworth, yeah. Alex O'Donovan, yeah. Luke Casey, yeah. Aaron Doherty, yeah. Joe Healy. Jack Murphy, yeah. Paul Deneen, yeah. Gregory O'Sullivan, yeah. Tygo Larry Ashford, yeah. Sean O'Sullivan, yeah. Oshin Tarmi Harris, yeah. Christopher Hockey. Yeah. A big cheer for Coachford National School. Right, so here we are now with the final. Our 11 aside, Kennedy versus Coach, with Kennedy playing from right to left. And Kennedy already on the offence with Dennis Murphy. Dennis Murphy, unfortunately, lost control of the ball. The conditions are very slippy and greasy today now, underfoot. So ball handling now is going to be have to be forgiven today. There'll be a lot of loose balls and loose fingers and everything now going on today with the condition of the, the pitch. Now, although underfoot the surface is very good, looks like Kennedy are flying with number 11, Jack Kelleher. And Jack Lass, he went to the top of the, the net anyway, so that's a goal for Jack. Then 35 seconds of the start of this half. We'll have 
15 minutes of football to look forward to and if Jack keeps going as he is we could end up with a feast of goals but a very good puck out there by Dylan Martin for, for um, I think it wasn't Dylan Martin it was one of the backs it was number three Tiger Brian Bradley trying to keep it out to the wings to keep kind of be away from the forward line well done to the defence there for Coachford now there's an injury here child from no it's okay Jack Kelleher looks in, in a bit of pain there a bit of discomfort so anyway, it's it's like near neighbours playing here because both both Coachford and Canavie would be um, from clubs that would be in Musgrave. Canavie, of course, famous for football, having won a junior All Ireland a few years back, and then we have Coachford, which would be part of Ahabulloch Parish. Now Ahabulloch now would be calling on Coachford, while well, and Ahabulloch itself to field teams. So. Coachwood would have an awful lot of influence when it comes to producing fine players for, for our ball down through the years. And of course, as in the tradition of all um, local clubs and schools, there's great rivalry going on, healthy rivalry here today. So there's a lot of pride at stake here. And these youngsters are on the hallow grounds of Parky Ring here. Um, in honour of our famous Christy Ring on this lovely November day here. Now, although it was rainy early in the morning, it has dried up now, which makes it pleasant for children when it comes to viewing the ball or watching for the ball coming, unlike having the blinding rain coming into their faces. Now, people are being very careful there and cautious with Jack. He did get up in an awful lot of discomfort and pain. So our referee will have, uh, have naturally enough, have paused. So we've had about almost two minutes, say a minute and a half in of injury time here, which the referee will naturally enough add on, if at all possible, at the end. So, Canavy have made a very good start with a goal, but a goal is only one kick of a ball, and Coach definitely are not going to take that line down. Now, high feeling there by Canavy, the ball is going out of place, but no Canavy player has it. And here we have, now if I could just see the number, all right, pass there to our number eight, and Billy Kingston. Billy Kingston has gotten the ball anyway. He's going for it again, being, being shadowed here by two players from Coachford. Well done, Coachford players. Billy is over on Forchie. He did a full circle with the ball in his hand, but of course he had very few options as he was well surrounded by the Coachford defenders. Now, 11 aside here today means we have um, two midfielders. And oh, got ball going here to a Coachford player. Well done, so to Daniel O'Driscoll. But the ball, unfortunately, didn't have finally there. And first he out of defence there is one of the defenders there for um, Canavy, our number two Owen Cullen and a lovely cross ball then clearance across giving options but no Mark Deneen got the ball there Mark beautifully placed there inch perfect to Aaron Doherty Aaron has managed to get around his player Fortunately, always been very well shattered so he's gotten the ball in but Canavy looked like they're in control with number six Dennis Murphy Dennis Murphy one of the midfielders coming back to help his defence lovely flick on there but kind of as Mark Deneen again Mark first to the ball, unfortunately upended. it. We won't say karate style, but he, he took a tumble anyway, and so there's a free there for Coachwood. Coach would be glad now to put some pressure on Canavy as they'd like to answer that opening goal by Canavy. With, if, if at all possible, a goal, but a, a point would be very welcome to. Now, our ref said there was a bit of pulling in the jerseys there, so the ball is going back in the opposite direction. Now, here we are now looking forward now to a uh, see what the Canavy have in store for Scott when it comes to the forward line, that lethal forward line that already has produced a goal. Num and here we have now number eight, Billy Kingston. Billy Kingston has one, getting out his teammates. To go up, a blinding, blistering one there. But well done to the goalie from coach, Dylan Martin. Well done, Ma Dylan is under fierce pressure. And the ball has, oh, it's Dylan playing, no. We're going to have, no, this, a referee is blowing out for a free in. It's not technically a free. But when the ball is touched like that, now we're going to have what I'd imagine, because the pitch is shorter, perhaps something like 30 yards. 30 yards. Now, and we have our number four, Captain Sean Brown. Sean is just waiting now for the referee to let him know where he's going to kick the ball from. Sean, our captain from the day, a big honour to represent your school. And of course, Sean will be half hoping that he'd come home with a cup as well. Now, Sean's giving plenty of height anyway, but it's gone, or yeah, or clay out of their 14 to the left and wide. But it was worth taking a chance anyway. There's very little breeze here today, so he was, he was giving it all he could because he knew the breeze wasn't going to interfere with the kick, but just slightly to the left anyway. But still, Canavy are happy.
happy with that cushion of one goal one goal that gives them breathing space but here we have number seven all mine all mine in his spot Ganavir putting an awful lot of pressure on the coach of defense ball is going hopping yes but ball kept him play very well done now here comes out dylan martin again dylan and a second goal for Canavy. And a, the second goal for Canavino was scored by a number nine, if I'm correct. Very hard to follow Canavy with those hoops and stripes on the jersey. And number nine, John McMahon. So John McMahon has got a goal for his team. So Canavino look like they're being ahead. They're ahead now by two goals. They're very comfortable at this stage. Now we have officially on the clock six and a half minutes but of course we have the injury time and that as well so um, about four minutes of play at this stage and already two goals scored and on number three Daniel O'Reard now picked off kicking going as far as number 10 Patrick O'Neill and now very well covered there by the coach of defence now great clearance there by my man with the red gloves and here fierce tussle there by Daniel O'Reard trying to win the ball in fairness now where it is a very free-flowing game and you know there's nothing worse than having a load of free so the ref is doing his best to let the ball play on so we've Paul Gilbert here now Paul Gilbert has the ball Paul is going to the ball nice clearance here now kicking the ball out left-legged well done at clearance here we have our number nine I think John McMahon here we have very good Patrick Patrick O'Neill is taking the ball, he's leaving it in, he's crossing up into space, giving his pre-med options. Be careful what you're saying, you're going into the mic. All right. Okay, now here we have a very, unfortunately now the can of V player picked it up, but he said, I'd say it was touch and go for poor Owen Moynihan, but Owen will make up for a tenfold now. So coach had a bit of breathing space again now. No, it's David Thompson. David Thompson kick it up into his teammate. And what do we Shane Tarrant kicking the ball up? Well, lovely space. Coach and look like they have options. Our left footed kicker, beautiful. Oh, ball in there. And with coach, would coach would love to get a goal. So now it's a very exciting game. Very exciting game there. Number nine, Alex O'Donovan having scored a goal now for Coach. So we've two goals for Canavy and that goal for Coach. And I thought Canavy had a dangerous forward. It looks like Coach equally is dangerous now. Clever kick out there by Noel Brown. Obviously tried to find his teammate. To Sean Brown, his brother. Sean is crossing the goal out there, trying to find options. Sean's kick it, but unfortunately, our goal scorer Alex is passing it on to his teammate. His teammate kicking up on high a Gary Owen, but to the left and wide. Now we're, our referee is asking our umpires, I think, a bit of excitement there on the part of the players. They're coming on top of poor Noel Brown, so we're giving Noel a bit of space out, kick the ball out. Noel is signalling to his teammates. Noel is signalling to Owen Moynihan. Owen is going to get there, but no, he was beaten by David Thompson. David Thompson, David, David's trying to get through. David will take, Forty takes a fall, but it's okay. And here we have Bursty out of defence now is another one of our players there, Jack O'Connor, I think. No, or is it, I think that might have been Sean Brown. Very hard to see with the numbers with all those stripes, so we'll just wait and see. Now the ball went out over the sideline. Our referee is doing an excellent job here today. Not only is he, is, is he encouraging the players, but he's also explaining the rudiments and the rules of the game, which is very useful. This, after all, this is a learning experience for all these players, not only the, the excitement of playing in Parky Ring. Canavy seem to be in control. They're getting the ball out there. Very good, very well done. Now, there's a push in the back, so Courtwood has it. Number six, Shane Tart, get each his teammate. Now, oh, the ref is holding back the play. He just wants to ensure that players are given room when it comes to kicking the ball. Because after all, a ball coming hard, you could kick a player, could hit a player in the face as well if they were too close to the kicker. Very good, very good. Now, a player there. Well, Canavy have it, Canavy on top, clearing it out. We know how dangerous this Canavy forward line is. They're trying to get forward again. Lovely pick up there by our defender there for Courtridge. Nicely done, lovely ball play there by Tyga Brian Badley. Tyga, sharp pass there to his teammate, but it's okay, Courtridge in control. But no, it's okay. Sean Brown is trying to get on top. It's going all over the place now. It's like a, it's like a tennis match, but it's okay. Alex O'Donovan has it. Alex a beautifully placed his teammate, Paul Gilbert. Paul Gilbert, though, was beaten by our number two, Owen Cullen. Owen Cullen really did very well there to win the ball cleanly and get the ball out of defence. Now, 
beautiful pass there to Dennis Murphy. Dennis Murphy's GBT's teammate. Here we have Dennis Murphy. And we all can be on the offensive. Dangerous, beautiful pass to our number 11, Jack Keller. Oh, well done, Dylan. Dylan blocked it at the expense of another, I call it 30 yards anyway, in. So I don't think um, Dylan would be unhappy with that at all. Better than an, a goal from the lethal forward, Jack Kelleher, of one goal already. Jack is hoping to increase his tally here today now. And of course, um, score a score your second goal would give Kennedy an even greater cushion. But Owen Moynihan now, oh sorry, it's Dennis Murphy. Dennis Murphy, sharp past his teammate. Nice ball, very well directed. Oh, fantastic captain play. Well done. Now being very well shallow, we know how dangerous this forward line is. But unfortunately, poor Billy Kingston just kicked it to the right and right. But at the same time now, um, although we've had a few wides in Canopy, like they're putting huge pressure on the coach to finish. So there has to be great praise given to the back line of Mark Deneen, Ty, Ty O'Brien Bradley, Daniel O'Driscoll and Billy Dennehy. Um, trying to keep that forward line out because that lethal forward line is getting great scores here today. Now, um, our side, there's been a sideline ball here, sideline going to Canavy. Now, the pupils who are acting as, as on the sideline today are local students and we're very grateful to the schools, the local secondary schools and primary schools that support Shkina School by releasing students to help us out here today. Now, oh, a fantastic lockdown there by our, our number six, Dennis Murphy. Well done to Dennis. Oh, uh, that was a bit of a tussle there. No, the loose ball, as I said, the ball's very greasy today. And, oh, very well done to Canavy coming out forward, coming out confidently. And here we have, unfortunately, that player was up injured. Number 10, Luke Casey. But would you blame, would you blame the Canavy backs? Because he's a lethal forward with a score like that scored. But unfortunately, he, Luke didn't hear the referee's whistle. And we have to wait for the referee to blow the whistle. And the whistle suits both the defenders and the forwards, giving the defenders time to regroup. And our referee is encouraging players to come back from the ball now. As, as I know from experience, a ball into the face with the mouth can make it a very sore, sore face for a few minutes. Because the power and the, the leather ball as well could hurt. So here we have now Coach Hope and get another score. And a high one, up and over. Well done to our number seven, David Thompson. So now, Canavy still ahead, two goals, to a goal and a point for Coltridge with about just over 11 minutes of play. Now, Canavy very well, Sean taking the ball from his brother, Noel, and Coltridge coming forward again with Ty, Daniel O'Driscoll. But Daniel O'Driscoll has lost the ball to Canavy number 12, David Topper. David Topper is, no, but here we come to Alex O'Donnell. Well Alex is coming again. Alex is trying to find out who to pass to. Beautiful pass there to our number eight, Paul Gilworth. Oh, a brilliant block there by Noel Brown. Oh, Noel Brown, unfortunately, um, unfortunately for poor, poor Coltrud, he made a fantastic save there. His family must be very proud of him. And our forward then just went slightly right of the post. Last to get to see, trying to get power to make sure. And here we are, number eight again now. Number eight. Oh, well done again to Noel Brown. Try, denying Paul Dilworth a definite goal. Now, our own power is, is, has signaled that we're going to have 30 yards. Our referee not only checking to see is Noel doing okay, but he's congratulating. Our referees at all time are neutral in these games. And um, are, are, are just encouraging and supporting the children as they play. As I said, this is a learning experience. And the role the referee is also to explain the rules and, and the reasons for blowing the whistle, etc. when it comes to the game. Now, here we have a high ball coming in from Coltrude. It's, it's holding. And our referee is just blowing up again for another 30 yards. Now, the Canavy defence is on top. And with only coaches getting only two scores, but and those two scores were hard earned. But they do have great respect for this forward coach and forward line. These teams would have met already, leading up to this final, so they know each other pretty well at this stage. A big kick in by our number six, our number six Shane Tarrant. But behind it were four defenders, including the goalie for Canavy. So they made a fantastic job there. You can hear a bit of cheery and excitement there, unfortunately. Our younger supporters thinking there's a goal scored, but, but that doesn't count at this stage. 
No. Dylan, oh sorry, Noah Brown has opted to give the, the kicking out duties to another one of his teammates. And kicking the ball is one of the defenders. Kick it out now. Hopping ball. Caught there neatly by Shane Tart. Shane getting it to his teammate, the lovely boots. Our number 11, Aaron Doherty. Aaron, Aaron get, trying to get the, feed the ball in, but very well caught there by, I think, was it Owen, Colin or Daniel over here? Now, we're coming to the closing stages of this first half. And can it be comfortably in front of our referee? Yes, I had timed it right. Our referee is blown for half time. So at half time in this final, Skeen is called final, we have Canavy two goals and Courtrude a goal and a point. So it's all to play for in the second half. Great game. All right. Yeah. So here we are now ready to start our second half and our referee is blowing for second half and now as the expression goes, we're off. Now as we can remember, Canavy were ahead and Canavy is starting very strongly again. Now there was a slight tug of the jersey there, Dennis Murphy, and so Dennis is a free there. Dennis kick it out into space. To be fair to Canavy, they're very good at finding um, each other there and going out into space always puts pressure on the defence, stretching the defence. But Coltridge had a sideline ball now. The, the, I'm sorry, no, sorry, Canavy. Oh, it's Coltridge has the sideline ball. Our referee's just holding up the play there slightly now just to give players some time to regroup and to reorganise. We always remember that that Kerry goal there many years ago in the All Ireland final when the ball went over the goalie's head. One of those golden moments that Dublin want to forget in football. So here we are anyway, Kennedy having a golden moment today now. Two goals, two goal and a point for Coltridge. And the ball being passed to our captain Sean Brown. Sean has the ball, Sean is bursting through. Sean unfortunately is up ended as they say. And Sean has a free. So Sean now is sorry, who's kicking? He's opting to lob it in because that dangerous forward line, that threatening ball, well cleared by the coach of defence there, out into and to Alex O'Donnell, Alex O'Donnell has the ball, Alex is turning, he's round his player, rounding Sean Brown, he's round his second player, he's, no, he's decided to lay it off, lay it off to his teammates, so we have no coach on the offence again, coach really want to make things count now in this half, up to our number 10, Luke Casey, Luke has the ball, Luke has gotten up in the ball, Luke is, he's after round his player, Luke is trying to make it less of an angle for himself, he's kicking the ball, and here we have, oh a goal for coach, a goal from the push of our green boots, Number 11, Alan, uh, Aaron Doherty. What a difference um, a goal makes. It's now two goals and a point to Coachford and two, go and two goals for Canavy. It's Canavy's first time in, in, in this match coming from behind. So the Canavy are made of stern stuff and competing for every ball we see Canavy now. So this match is really interesting. Now it's, it's, it's getting more and more exciting now at this stage. Now, now the coach is up a point. But it's only one kick of a ball in here. We have our number seven, David Thompson, scoring the point, kicking up to Canavy. Canavy is always our back line, very strong. And bursting out of defence here is our number two, Owen Cullen. Owen Cullen has had a great match today along with the rest of the defenders. Help him. Now, a very useful free there by Jack Kelleher. Jack Kelleher kicked the ball into his team. It's another goal. It's a point by Patrick O'Neill. As they say, now we have a game. We have two goals and a point apiece now. So uh, with, with another 13 minutes of play left now. So we have our defender and our, our goalkeeper now, Dylan Martin. After stopping what was most probably um, ready to block what was most probably a goal. And a very clever point there taken by Patrick O'Neill. As they say, take the points, the goals will come. The kick out, a long kick out by going to the centre of the field. Now there's a toss in the middle in the centre of the field, our number five. Um, Jack O'Connor seems to be on this half. Coach are coming ahead, coach are bursting through. And it's our, our clear upset for you to the left and right. Nearly three and a half minutes gone now and still level pegging between the two teams. Okay, great kick out there by, by our Noah Brown. Noah Brown kicking the ball as far as his teammate. Coming, the ball's been passed on to number 10. Number 10, our point scorer, Aaron. Um, Patrick O'Neill. Patrick O'Neill lost the ball again. So coming up to number our captain, Sean Brown. Sean Brown now. They beautifully placed by Sean Brown out to his number eight, Billy King. Billy King still turning. Billy is looking up. He's plenty of oh, inch perfect pass there by Billy King. No, just to hold, get the ball. And Canavy are ahead again. If I'm right, was that a score by our number 11? 
Jack Kelleher scored that point. Well done to Jack. Jack's first point. A very valuable point there for Kennedy. Kennedy back in front again. Now get away to kick the ball out is Tygo Brian Bradley for poetry. Now this is, I don't know if it's a substitution or positional switch right. Our number three is coming off. Number three, Tygo Brian Bradley is being replaced. Now we're at a, a position switch loop. Sorry, number 18 is on anyway, that's Adam, no, Conor O'Neill and a position switch there by Canopy, trying to strengthen that defence that, that was rocked there by Coach with two goals. Now, here we have Coach trying to come through again, very free flying football here today, our number 8 for Coach with Paul Dilmer kicking the ball, but no, very well collected there in the defence after earning himself a free coming out. Beautiful inch perfect pass there to Sean Brown. Sean Brown is looking up, trying to find options. Trying to hit the low ball along the ground. But first to the ball is our number three for Portrait. Tyke O'Brien Bradley. Tyke is kicking out into the side, out onto the wing, trying to keep the danger at bay. Tyke is on his own, being marked by two Canavy um, forwards. Such is the enthusiasm for Canavy. Very well done. But unfortunately, a loose here is there, gives an the option to Canavy. Our number six for Canavy. Dennis Murphy kicking to the left and right. Now, it's an interesting, it's an interesting ten minutes left in this half. Now, it's nothing to, nothing between them hardly. We have Canavy with two goals and two points, and Coaches with two goals and a point. So it's neck and neck. Here we have the toss between Alex O'Donovan here and Sean Brown towards the centre. Field. Sean Brown he has the ball now. Sean is trying to go to his. Beautiful pass again to number nine, John Ma John McMahon. John McMahon, but it's okay. Dylan Martin has the ball. Dylan is steering out to the wing. But first, it will be a Canavy player. No. Our umpire has signaled now for uh, 30 yards in, as I'm calculating. It's about 30 yards. Now this this is a critical stage for both teams. There's only a point between them, one kick of a ball. So Canavy, of course, will be hoping to keep. That, that lead and, and add to it. Coach, of course, struggling to come back into the game after the blistering two goals start by Canavy, but scrambled back into the game and now have everything to play for. And another fantastic collect, hot collection there by Dylan Martin. Dylan Martin, he even managed to get it out to Shane Town. Shane Town is the ball up, coming to his number 10, Luke Casey. Luke Casey now must try and get, get away as fast as he can. Now our referee has blown for a free there and it's a canopy ball unfortunately when Luke fell on the ground unfortunately he touched the ball as he fell so there's a free there so here we have now canopy again Canavy very good at finding each other, very good for players running off the ball, etc. All the rudiments of the basic game. Unfortunately for poor John McMahon, he was in trying to get round Daniel Otis, but he unfortunately overcarried the ball. Number seven there um, is David Thompson after scoring a point. Hi, Gary Old to Alex Oton. Alex is coming. Oh, brilliant block there by Nova. Oh! And followed through by Coachford. If I'm right, it's Coachford with the green boots. Number 11, Aaron Doherty. Aaron Doherty with his second goal. Aaron Doherty. I could be wrong, he's someone there who actually scored the goal. There was such a tussle there. That I'm number 10. Number 8 was our number 10, Luke Casey. His first goal of the match. So, so now we have Coach with three goals and a point, and Canavy two goals and two points. Now there are lots of position switches and changes here, subs coming on and off, and um, there are players of course tying the shoelaces if they could take a very nasty fall if the laces were open too. So we'll be waiting and expecting Coach with, or Coach with now to experience another blow from the Canavy forward line. Already Canavy starts to mean to go on with Paul Dill, sorry, with Owen Moyne kicking the ball up. Owen Moyne is on getting the ball as far as his teammates. Here we have our number 11 here, Jack Kelleher, the goal scorer. Jack gets the forward line, but no coach with a blocking our defender here for coach Gary to Alex O'Donovan. Alex took a fall going for the ball, Jack Brown has it. And almost blocked there by our number two, Mark Dillon. The clearance area. 
Kennedy again leaving it always. Kennedy trying to level the score. A beautiful kick on the outside of the right foot there by our number 11, Jack Kelleher, getting another point here now to add to his other, other goal. So you see Kennedy are inching away, eating away at that, that lead there now by Coltrane. So the score at the moment is Coltrane, three goals and a point to Canavies, two goals and four, two goals and three, two goals and three points for Canavies. Now, the, the, the supporters from both schools getting behind their, their, their um, teammates, as often happens on a day like today, schools take nearly take a lala in order to support their kids. Unfortunately for Portrait, that went all the way in. A dangerous ball there from Jack Kelleher getting the goal. Now it's a very interesting up prospect. Three goals and three points for Canavy, but Portrait, three goals and a point. And we have less than five minutes to go now. Now, unfortunately, this can happen. Players, players can be caught as they say sleeping, but a strong ball going through, can greasy, greasy ball going through fingers as well can get a little touch from another forward going in and go all the way to the net. Now, well done there by our number eight, Paul Jill. We're trying to kick the low ball in. The first of the ball there is our number two, Owen Cullen. Owen Cullen is kicking the ball out. Owen kick it out. And it hops kindly there for his teammate. Unfortunately, um, Kennedy are still in front for Porter. Porter can't seem to do anything that Kennedy. Kennedy at their tails up. And bursting through again is Jack Kelleher. Jack Kelleher. Well, can Jack Kelleher unfortunately overcarried the ball, so Coach would have the chance again now to try and regroup and get a score. A coach a defender here trying to make space and kick the ball down the left wing. Well done to Alex O'Donovan. Alex O'Donovan has the ball. Alex is trying to keep going. Alex is trying to carry it all the way himself. He's very few options. He's trying to kick it into space, but it looks like Noel Brown is out first. Well done to Noel Brown. Noel kick it. Will he get it to his brother? No. Coming to number four. And Daniel O'Driscoll. Daniel O'Driscoll has the ball. Daniel's trying to get round. He's trying to make space. He's virtually he's lost the ball to Jack Brown. Jack Brown. Brown there's been marked. No, Kennedy in front again. Kennedy owns Colin. Owen Colin's coming out. Owen Colin having a solid day in the defence with the rest of his teammates as well in the defence. No. Kennedy in front again. Is that Jack again coming through? He's gonna go soccer style this time. Well done to Dylan Martin. Dylan Martin has blocked the ball. Dylan Martin kept his head as our forward supreme was, was bearing down on goals. He kept his head, it takes a, a cool head now to not falter when you have a forward the calibre of Jack Kelleher coming down. Of course, one goal wasn't enough for him. He needed a few more and to add to that we Patrick O'Neill and John McMahon. We have a very strong forward line today from Kennedy. The likes of Billy Kingston, John McMahon, Patrick O'Neill, Jack Kelleher. I think David Tupper has gone to the back line if I'm right. But all the forwards in Kennedy have made a huge impact today on the match. Now, another forward for Porter trying to reach the ball, but unfortunately not far enough, Alex O'Donovan. Now, with two minutes left, Canavy had the nice cushion of having two points. So for Porter, they'll either have to get the goal to win or score two points to level. Teeing up the ball is Dennis Murphy. Dennis Murphy, give, give it plenty of height in it. She's teaming. Very good catch there by our number eight, Billy Kingston. Billy Kingston, unfortunately, his ball's gone to the right and wide. Porter, a very fast kick out there. But our referee is blowing. Unfortunately, it seems that there, there's more than one referee there today with mentors on the sideline adding their top and score. Unfortunately, it always happens. People get too excited the day of a match. And it upsets the children playing, to be fair enough. But anyway, it's not upsetting Canavy. Canavy are there now, over carrying off the ball. Coachard hoping to get forward again. And Coachard trying to use every precious second, getting the ball to number seven, David Thompson. David Thompson getting the ball to his teammate, but it doesn't bounce kindly, and it comes as far as Sean Brown. Sean Brown has the ball, Sean is trying to get, Sean is kicking the ball out to his teammate, but no to number four, Daniel O'Driscoll. Daniel's getting help from his number six, Shane Tarr. Shane is getting the ball in, but to the right and wide. To be fair, coach would have had plenty of chances there today now, and unfortunately, when the ball doesn't bounce kindly for you, 
It doesn't go right for us every day. But that's not to say that coaches haven't given us such a day's entertainment and such heart and spirit. Still trying to come back with Shane Tarr getting his team in. Now coach are trying to walk this ball in, trying to engineer the score. Oh my goodness, I didn't think to come. David Thompson has scored a goal if I did right. Coach, you got a goal. Do we know what Canavy are like? Canavy are lethal. That forward line up there now are just waiting for the ball. Canavy can try and create something. There are seconds left, but I wouldn't write Canavy off yet. Canavy was look for either and score. Point to level it. Hopefully now Canavy can get a score in the end, bring us into injury time because or extra time because no one wants to see any school losing here today. They have both been fantastic schools. Clean spirited, fair play, enthusiasm and heart. Look at Jack Brown, Jack our captain, trying to get do it on his own. If Jack can get a score, Jack has gotten a leveling point. So Jack has brought it to three goals and four points. And coach it with three, four goals and a point. Our referee is looking at his watch. He's looking at his watch, he's wearing her time. Alex O'Donovan has the ball. Alex is there, Alex has gotten to his teammate. What can our number eight, Paul Gilbert, do? Paul Gilbert trying to get in. The ball is hopping nicely for Luke Casey. Luke don't find it very hard to burst through that very strong Canavy defence. Luke has gotten it up and over. And a point for coach it. Make it four goals and two points for coach it. Now our ref is very kindly given injury time as well because when players go down he always gives extra time and he's allowing every second of the injury time to be used to give Canavy the best possible chance. Canavy never say die says Canavy and here we have our number nine John McMahon never saying join. John is getting to Jack. Jack is hoping to help his team. He's going to lead his team. Captain Supreme but he's been blocked by the coach and players. They have too much respect for Jack. Jack unfortunately dropped the ball and picked it up. In his, in his efforts to try and get the ball through. This is the one of the most exciting matches I've ever witnessed. I really want to see both teams now coming off the, 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 mat, the pitch happy today, but unfortunately, we can only have one winner. Who will it be? And it's Coltrane after winning by the smallest of fractions. Heartache for poor Canavy and jubilation for Coltrane. But if I have to be honest, Canopy should hold their heads up high because they were a team supreme who pushed Coltra to the very, very limit. And it just took a one kick of the ball for them to be separated. Mosby football is very strong. With Canopy losing by the smallest of margins, with Coltra scoring four goals and two points to Canopy's three goals and four. 